Hey everybody, this is Joshua, the tendonitis expert. And on this video, we're going to talk about tendinosis. What is tendinosis? Why do you have it? And how do you get rid of it? So it's a very simple concept, really. Here is your tendon. Here is your muscle that attaches to tendon. And there's the bone. So muscle has direct blood supply. Arteries come into it and they break into smaller arteries superficial and deep, and the muscle gets direct blood supply. Blood goes directly in. That's an arrow. Blood goes directly in. I don't like that arrow. But tendon does not get direct blood supply. Tendon only absorbs the nutrition that's floating around in the fluid around it. So you can see how that's problematic. The muscle gets blood supply directly into it, Tendon does not. So it has to somehow absorb that nutrition in. When a muscle is tight, it's pulling on the tendon. So it's constantly pulling on the tendon, so it's taut. Tendons don't really stretch. They're not really flexible, but you can pull on them and it basically compresses them, makes them taut. And that makes it harder for nutrition to get absorbed into the tendon. So essentially what that means is you have a tendon with millions and millions and millions of cells. If the nutrition, if not enough nutrition gets in there, then the cells starve and the cells die. And eventually, a lot of cells die. And essentially, ultimately, that leads to small degeneration damage as things fall apart, overall weakness, and eventual tear and rupture. What this looks like is surgeons have been reporting that when they do surgery for tendonitis, no matter whether it's the wrist or the Achilles or anywhere else, they're noticing tendinosis on the tendons. That basically looks like a dull gray on the otherwise shiny, white, healthy tendon tissue. And that dull gray is dead cells and or degenerating tendon tissue. So point being, tendinosis is tendon death due to starvation of cells. What is tendinosis? Tendinosis is when you have a tendon with millions of cells that has to absorb nutrition from the fluid around it, and doesn't get enough nutrition to those cells, those cells die, and you start getting degeneration and eventual potential rupture. So that's what tendinosis is. So what causes tendinosis? I've kind of already mentioned it. Here's the muscle. Here's the tendon. When the muscle is tight, when it's contracting, because muscles at length are that long, and the way they contract, they're that long. So you can imagine that if this is the bone, and there's the tendon, and there's the tendon, which isn't exactly accurate because tendon doesn't stretch, but you can imagine that the tighter a muscle gets, the longer the tendon gets. And it doesn't like that. It's more like a steel cable than a bungee cord. But as it gets pulled on, it gets tight and taut and compressed a little bit. So what little sponge aspects the tendon has gets decreased when it's tight and taut, and this nutrition can't get into the tendon. So those cells start to die. Essentially, the tendonitis dynamic is what causes tendinosis. Doctors won't tell you that, but the cause of tendinosis isn't you just magically get cell de tendon degeneration out of the blue by magic for no reason. Tendinosis is caused by the tendonitis dynamic, and the tendonitis dynamic is caused by three factors. Muscle and connective tissue tightness, inflammation, and nutritional insufficiency. I talk about this a lot on other videos, so I won't say much about it here, but essentially tendonitis is tightness, inflammation, and nutritional insufficiency. All those work together to keep this muscle tight, to keep this tendon taut, and to get even less nutrition available for the tendon. So if you know you have tendinosis, you've probably had tendinosis for a while. Even if you were just told yesterday by a doctor that tendinosis is the diagnosis, 
it's been going on quite a while. Tendinosis doesn't just happen overnight. It doesn't just show up out of the blue suddenly. It's a long, ongoing process, generally just like the tendonitis dynamic, where you get tight over time, you stay tight. You get more and more inflammation over time, and it kind of becomes habitual, chronic. And nutritional insufficiency is endemic through that because tightness eats up nutrition, and inflammation eats up nutrition. Then you start to hurt, and that eats up nutrition. So there's multiple factors all working together to cause this tendonitis and tendinosis. So the question might be posed, why haven't you fixed it yet? And the, unfortunately, the easy answer is because your doctor doesn't know how to fix it and your physical therapist doesn't know how to fix it. Maybe they help some people, but I'm biased. I work with all the people that doctors don't fix, don't help. That's just kind of how it works out. So when people come to me and they've said they've done everything their doctors told them to do for years and everything their physical therapist has told them to do for years and it hasn't helped, then this is the conversation I have with them. You still have tendinosis because you still have tightness. You still have inflammation. You still have nutritional insufficiency. And that's causing lack of nutrition to be absorbed by the tendon. And then the tendon starts to get some damage. And eventually that damage causes problems. A lot of people have damage, they don't have pain. So it's not necessarily the problem. The problem is when it's a problem for you, whether you're limping, whether it's stopping you from being able to run or walk or stand or work, etc. then it becomes a problem. Then you get really motivated about fixing it. So you're motivated now, great. And you want to fix your tendinosis. How do you do that? You have to get rid of the tightness. Oops, let's go this one. You have to get rid of the tightness. You have to get rid of inflammation and you have to correct the nutritional insufficiency. Until you do that, your tendinosis is not going to be able, be able to repair. Not only will it not go away, but it won't be able to go away until these factors are dealt with. When doctors tell you to rest, when doctors put you in splints and braces and walking boots and even casts, that's not going to fix the problem because it can't fix the problem. Immobilization does not reverse any of the factors that cause the problem. So again, if you want to fix your tendinosis, you get to do the same thing as fixing your tendonitis, which is get rid of the, get rid of the muscle and connective tissue tightness, get rid of the inflammation and the triggers of inflammation, and get rid of the nutritional insufficiency. Then your body can work better, then your body can work correctly, and then your body, body can heal. If you'd like to find out more about tendinosis, then go ahead and visit my website, tendonitisexpert.com, and find the appropriate page. And if you'd like to get rid of any tendinosis issue you have, which probably includes tendonitis symptoms, because that's generally just the way it works, then I recommend you get one of my reversing tendonitis programs, whether that's reversing wrist tendonitis, if you've been told you have tendinosis in the wrist and or elbow area, or reversing Achilles tendonitis, which probably will be the most common one, because that's where most people get the tendinosis diagnosis. And you can find those on the site as well. And if you have questions, feel free to ask by the contact form on my site. Oops.